In this module, we'll enhance our existing KDB architecture that we started in the quick start. And first of all, we're going to do that by adding a second data feed. Now we will cover how to define a table schema, setting up a new dummy feed and automating the data publishing process. And in this first video, we'll be defining the new schema. Now data feeds can be market or any other time series data and a feed handler converts this data stream into a format suitable for writing to KDB. Now these feed handlers are usually written in a compiled language such as C, C++ or C Sharp or Java. But for this course, we're just going to keep things simple and extend our Q feed handler that we already have. So we're going to introduce a new table called quote to accommodate additional data. And the first step in doing this is editing our schema file, which is sim.q in our case. So just to pause here and explain what we're looking at in this file, for those of you new to the Q language, this is called table notation, which has got round brackets followed by square brackets, which indicates we're creating a brand new table. Now the square brackets can be empty, like in this example, and all the columns to the right of this are outside the bracket. And this indicates it's an unkeyed table. Or we can add columns inside the square brackets if we wanted this to be a key table. Now we have an entire video in our academy course dedicated to this, talking about key tables versus unkey tables and their differences and when you choose one over the other. So do check out that course as well as the documentation if you're interested in learning more about this. And we're going to link all of this in the course notes for you too. So let's move on to the piece that defines the columns on their data types. So the first column is called time and we're setting it here with a data type of a time span. And this notation is how we define a column of a specific type using this cast symbol, which is the dollar symbol. And we're setting it to have no rows and that's indicated by these empty brackets after the do dollar symbol. That's saying we're just gonna have um, a null value here. Now we use the same notation to define the rest of the columns as symbols and floats. And you can see here, we separate these with a semicolon. Now for more on all the data types available in KDB and on detail on this notation, we do have entire videos and modules on the Academy dedicated just to that. So I will link them below. So. Let's add in our quote table and I will have this in the readme for you so you can copy and paste it from there to save yourself typing it out. Um, you can see we're having a very similar table here. The first two columns are the same as trade. So we've got time and sim and then we have four new columns, bid, ask, bid size and ask size. So they're typical columns you'd find in a quote table. Um, you might also notice one thing I haven't mentioned is this backtick hash g and that's how we're applying a grouped attribute in KDB and that's really something you would do for performance and um, it's a performance enhancement. So again, I'm going to link to the modules on attributes specifically in the course notes for you to learn all about them. So now that we have our schema added, we can simply save this file and I am going to just show you how you can restart your system. So I actually had the other systems already shut down, but I'm just going to show you to exit a queue process. You can do double black slash. So that's now killed. This is my ticker plan process. And I wanted to show one more thing. So in our directory from our quick start, we do have a number of files added. So we've got our SIM here, which has got our data. And then we have our, these here log files. So for each day, we've got a new log, log file. And I will actually just delete all of these files. So I can just do that, anything with SIM so that we can start fresh with our new code table. Okay. so. Let's restart our checker plant and our ORDB and see what happens. So running the same thing we had before and checking with .u.w, we now have two tables. Now let's launch our ORDB again. And we see we now have trade and we have quote. Great, so that's our new schema added ready to pump in some new quote data. So that'll be in the next video when we're gonna add our quote data to our feed handler.